So how are you doing, Chris? I'm not too bad. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm very good. I'm very good. And how's your weekend been so far? Eh, not too bad. Watched some uh, van damage this afternoon in preparation. Nice. Always, always a good Sunday afternoon where Van Damme's concerned. <laughs> exactly. How, how about yourself, Doc? Are you are you doing well? I'm all right. Can't crumble. I can, but you don't want to wear it, do you? <laughs> you don't want to wear it. No, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the show might be named after you, but you you know your place, all right? Keep your yeah, right. mouth <laughs> shut. Okay, so I don't know. We'll do a, a quick introduction then, and uh, away we go. One year ago in 2012, a crack duo, one martial arts expert and surprisingly good mimic, the other a weapons specialist and professionally bearded, were sent to separate recording stations thousands of miles apart to do an 80s and 90s action commentary podcast for a crime they happily committed. Something James Spader told them about that involved an industrial drum of coconut butter hand lotion and a common household whisk. These men promptly created a passion-filled wave of action adoration that swept throughout the internet underground. Today, still wanted by Steven Seagal for making one too many jokes about his expanding gut and knitted hair, they survive as podcasters of fortune. If you love action, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you should be listening to Dr. Action and the Kick-Ass Kid Commentaries. This podcast, people, explodes. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Axon in the kick ass Kid Commentary Podcast, minus the commentary this week. I am Dr. Action. And I am the bloody kick ass Kid. <laughs> and with us this week, uh, it's very exciting, this week we have uh, none other than the host, the wonderful and exciting impresario of the <laughs> Wafu FM empire, uh, none other than Mr. Snoog himself, Chris Armstrong. Say hello, sir. Hello, that was a very nice introduction. Thank you, sir. I was trying to work out the word. I was thinking like I was thinking like the overseer, the manager, the CEO. I was like, that's all shit. Empresario <laughs> is really what you are because you have a whole empire over there at Wafu. Why don't you tell the, the listeners what it's all about, sir? Oh, uh, it's, it's a movie podcast. You know, we'd, we'd go over the week's news. We usually just moan a lot about the news because most movie news just pisses me off, really. And then follow it up with a couple of reviews. And, you know, it's, it's a bit like that after movie day. And I'm like, nothing's off limits, really. We'll review anything. Right, exactly. And then you've just started up Wafu AM. That's true, yeah. Which is, all, which is not about films. That's about everything else. Yeah, it was just because every time we record a show, for like the first hour, we just end up not running about anything. So right. we thought, why not just, why not just you know? use the time properly and do another podcast. <laughs> yeah, why not just put that out there as well? No, that's exactly what you should be doing. That's fantastic. And and you also have a website which sort of has film reviews and things on it as well. Yeah, I haven't updated that for a while since I started doing the podcast because I did used to have another podcast um, a couple of years ago called Revolving Video and then when that stopped, I started doing the blog and then we started Waffle FM so the blog kind of fell by the wayside a little bit but I might start it up again soon. Yeah, that's what happens, isn't it? I, I remember when I used to do written reviews, and then obviously you start the shows, and it takes up all your time. I still throw the occasional one out there, but uh, it is what it is. And so what is, let's put this to rest once for all, what is Wafu? Where does that come from? It comes from um, the film, the masterpiece, Samurai Cop. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, well, it is a word, and um, it means like Japanese, style or something like that. It's something to do with Japanese food, but it's just a point in the film where Robert Dadar, uh, the great Robert Dadar, gets punched in the head and just makes a nice wafu. And me and my cousin used to think that was hilarious and we just used to say it all the time and eventually I couldn't think of a name so I'm just called wafu. And I, I'll, I'll happily announce that Samurai Cop is screening uh, this coming Friday uh, midnight in New York City, and I will be going to see a new cleaned-up print of it. I understand that you are quoted on the back of the DVD cover. Is that is that true? Yeah, I've got a, um, it was the, the guy who runs the Facebook page about the director, because the director is like some crazy Iranian guy who made all these bizarre action movies in the late 80s. And um, I'm friends with him, and I helped him with the Facebook page, and he got them to put a little special thanks to Snoog on the back, which made my life, pretty much, because I love that movie. Yeah, of course. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And, uh, I mean, lastly, then, I guess, sort of how did you come across uh, us, Dr. Action, the After Movie Diner, and all that stuff? I think it was through uh, Twitter, probably. I think it was through Grindhouse Dave. 
who listens to um, the diner, and he's always plugging podcasts on there. And I think he plugged the after movie diner one. We gave it a try, loved it, and I've been listening to Doc Reaction since the first episode. So. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so, uh, Doc, why don't you tell all the listeners uh, what this week's show is going to be about, and start us off with a few questions. Okay, then. This week's show is about Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, yes, and the puppies. <laughs> These little puppies. Yeah. I know. I know that Mr. Snoog is a big fan of Jean Claude Van Damme. So I, I thought let's get, let's get him on. Let's get him on and talk some Van Damme. So uh, let's think of a first question, Mr. Armstrong. What is your very favourite Jean Claude Van Damme movie? Uh, probably the Kickboxer. I think it was. It was well, yeah, it was. It was the first Van Damme film I saw when I was about seven. Yeah, I think I went round to a friend's house. I, think I was probably still, in, well, yeah, about seven. I would have still been in primary school, which is probably too young to be watching Kickboxer. But I went round. He was, he was, you know, telling us about this guy, John Claude Van Damme. Stuck the film on, loved it. And I think that night I just borrowed it. I think he'd only bought the thing the day before, but I just stole it, took it home, watched it about five times. So I'd probably say that was still my favourite Van Damme movie. Good choice, good choice. Very scary for a seven-year-old though, with the, the clothes that he wears in it. It is pretty terrifying, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, the, the large amount of splits he just seems to routinely go around doing in all of his early films. Yeah, I've got a question on uh, Twitter from Mr Richard Pierce, and he says, Dr Action Kick-Ass, Snoog, which movie featured the best Van Damme head do, Time Cop or Hard Target? And he says, personally, I've got to go with Hard Target Moulet. So, gentlemen, I would agree. Favorite? I would agree. The, yeah, Moulet, totally. the Moulet is fantastic, yeah. And, and I haven't seen all of uh, JCVD's stuff, but has he sported the Moulet in any other movie? I don't think so. I think it's just no. those two movies, really. Right. Yeah. So you think John Woo came on, on set and he was like, now nah, there's one do. We need Moulet. And they, <laughs> they went off and they found some sort of... And they put it on. Or do you reckon like Van Damme was just, for that short period in time... Rocking that greasy, oiled up, semi permed, glorious Moulet. Well, that, that, uh, I mean, the Man of Steel apparently is caping that is not real at all. It's just one big special effect through the whole film, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. So, do you think the Moulet was actually just a special effect in Hard Target that they added in afterwards? It, it's fantastic if it is. Um, but I think, I think, no, probably, probably it's genuine. I like, I like to believe that, uh, VD used it to lasso the ladies. Yeah. I mean, it's so long and luscious, but I mean, how, how does he, how does he get that much grease on it? Cause it's a real greasy mullet. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think he got the grease from Seagal actually. Yeah. He probably it borrowed did, it from that's Seagal's. Why they fell out. That's why they fell out. Cause he stole Seagal's grease. <laughs> yeah. He, he went into he his stole special, his, his special bore based oil reserves that Seagal has at his house. <laughs> Where he he has, he always at any one point has has several wild boar uh, hanging up at the back of his house, draining what he likes to call draining into a large <laughs> fat. His uh, mouth. Yeah. <laughs> his mouth. Yeah, indeed. And I think that's, you know, that's probably, like you say, that's probably the, the, the cause of their rift. I think I think we've stumbled upon it. I yeah, think that's yeah, got to be it. Got to be something it. like that. I think that's what, yeah. that was probably what the fight was about at Stallone's house. That infamous drunken battle that almost yeah. took place. Oh, Oi, I Johnny, yeah. did did you steal my ball grease? No, they call him Johnny. <laughs> yeah, that's like, Johnny. <laughs> did you steal? Did you steal my ball grease? I'm gonna slap your hands. You bad the movie. <laughs> now that's probably what happened. And Sean Claude was saying, no, 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 I was just cuddling the puppy. The puppy, <clears throat> he rubbed on my hair, and I get this glorious, greasy look. It was the puppy. I it squeeze was... the piss out of the dog. <laughs> and I rub that in my hair. That's no puppy, you little mook. Hans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick your ass, you little Frenchman. Um, <laughs> That's that. There we go. We've just reenacted it. And then Stallone came over and he said, "What? What did Stallone say, Doc?" He said, "That's what you gotta do. That's the best thing. The best thing ever, man. That's what you gotta do. Do that. Do that." 
gonna get away from the hummer step. <laughs> um, I can't do the accent, but yeah, get, get away from the hummer step. He said, "Okay, so <laughs> you can spoil it." I made it myself. I can take you both on. <laughs> Anybody else here? Hey, Arnie, come on over and give me a hand, will you? <laughs> no, I want the hummus dip. Stay away. I don't want you messing it up with your crazy hair grease. Um, Stay yeah, away I... from the goddamn hummus, okay, Seagal? <laughs> it's me, Kurt Russell. <laughs> and, and, yeah... <laughs> And and thus Planet Hollywood was born. So, <laughs> yeah, that's that, that officially. It's <laughs> officially what it is. Chris, um, quickly, do a Bruce Willis. Can you do a, a Bruce Willis impersonation, Chris? Oh, no, I'm, I'm rubbish at impressions. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like, I feel it really opened me depth on this show when it comes to impressions. <laughs> that's crazy. I don't know why <laughs> you would say that. Our impressions, they're more lovingly kind of in the ballpark, but not accurate. <laughs> Just kind of silly, cuckoo, crazy, you know. Uh, so <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's just we had so much fun doing the impressions last week, I can't tell you. I just feel like every commentary from now on I want to do is Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, I loved the Michael Caine, and especially like uh, Christopher Walken trying to explain what Wafu meant. It was probably <laughs> one of my favorite parts of Doctor Action ever. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that was. Uh, I'll do. I'll do a commercial for Wafu exactly like that. Yeah. That what was... is Wafu? You say you don't know, but it's crazy. We'll, we'll do something like that, and uh, and then Michael Caine, you don't know what you're bloody talking about. I love. I love getting loud as Kane. That's my favorite bit. But... Yeah, that was. Yeah, that, was that was an honor. That was an honour to have uh, Michael Caine refer to me as Bloody Snoke. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bloody Snoke. I'm telling you, he's on the show next bloody week, <laughs> which is today. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> let's go on with more questions. Do we have any more questions, Doc, on the Twitter feed? Oh, not on Twitter, I don't think. On uh, Facebook, we've got about three or four. Oh, yeah, it? yeah, definitely on uh, Facebook. Uh, Do you want to go ahead with one of those? Uh, I've just got to find it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll go, I'll go with the first one from Eric Campos. Go on, then. Who wrote, I don't know if you guys... I'm going to do it like this. I don't know if you guys have covered this in a previous podcast or not, but does anyone have any info on why there is a cat meowing throughout all the fight scenes in Bloodsport? Just discovered this oddity myself, and it's seriously fucking weird. <laughs> so that's what he... <laughs> has anyone <laughs> noticed... That there was a cat meowing throughout the fight scenes in Bloodsport. Did, did, I didn't notice that when we did the commentary, Doc, did you? No, I didn't, no. Yeah, so I read that and went back and um, looked at a couple of fights and I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> is that one of the... Uh, is that what you watched this afternoon? Did you watch Bloodsport? No, I watched uh, Maximum Risk. Oh, oh. With uh, Natasha Henstridge. Indeed. I have that on Blu-ray. Oh, very nice. <laughs> oh, very nice. <laughs> I'll have that with some Battenberg. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen Maximum Risk in forever, actually. I need to put the disc back in, but uh, that's yeah. a good one. I didn't notice the cat meowing, and I have no uh, knowledge of that happening. I can look it up I online. I wonder if he was watching it with his cat. <laughs> <laughs> what if he didn't realise that a neighbour's cat came in through the window, <laughs> got into the sofa, and he and was he sat on it the whole movie? <laughs> He could have been like a real big Jean Claude Van Damme fan, and he didn't know. And he's just every time he's fighting, he's just going, meow, yeah, meow, loving it. And he's, you know, not on every copy, just his copy. <laughs> so. uh, I'm gonna, I'm typing it in now to the uh, wonder that is Google, and um, blood sport and cat noises. Okay, here we go. Let's read this out and see. This is on the Vashti blog or Vashti blog. I don't know what that means. Last night, friends and I were watching TV and Bloodsport came on. I had never really watched it before, but we noticed that during the fight scenes, there were reoccurring loud cat meows. It happened so frequently, it seemed like a joke on the filmmakers. Has anyone else noticed this? I don't know that there was repeated loud cat no- I, I mean, I honestly think some of these people might have been sat on their animals while watching the movie <laughs> and were unaware of such a thing. Well, Eric Campos noticed. Yeah. 
Well, uh, I, I think what we need to do is demand that the listeners send in audio representation of this, and then we'll play it on the show to, to solve this problem once and for all. Yeah, it's, it's a curiosity for cats. <laughs> and that killed the cats, well, apparently. It killed them because the big, big men were sitting on them while watching Bloodsport. Uh, so, um, and have you got the next question from Paul Bianco, sir? Yes, it says, I think... Do you want me to do a voice for this? <laughs> you could do whatever the bloody hell you want. All right, I'm going to say that Paul Bianco sounds like Nick Nolte. OK. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone agrees that Double and Bat is possibly his greatest movie ever. Do you guys demand a sequel along with the rest of us? And which is the best way to take the characters? I know there's a script floating around that's probably close to production. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how accurate that is? I didn't understand a word, and that is exactly what I feel like when I watch Nick Nolte. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, Snoop, what do you think? Would you like to see a Double Impact sequel? And is it possibly his greatest movie ever? It's one of my favourites, yeah, I would like to say it. I think he's mentioned that a couple of times, he would like to go back and make a sequel of that and flip the roles around, like with the Alex character coming to America and stuff. I think it could work. Yeah, I mean, it's it's my favourite. It was the, It's possibly the first one I ever saw of, of Van Damme's proper. I mean, I know there are a lot of Hard Target fans out there, and I feel like Hard Target was possibly... I like it, but I feel like it was something you possibly had to come to closer to the time. I think you never forget your first time, and for me it was Double Impact. I think the Double Impact has the the glorious uh, double performance by Van Damme, stretching himself in, in quite a unique and beautiful way. Um, I, I love the balls it takes to play the effeminate brother character. I think that really takes some kind of guts, more so than doing any actual action. And also that love scene where he gets really frustrated imagining... <laughs> His brother having sex with his wife is possibly the most hilarious, you know, two minutes of film ever committed yeah. uh, to celluloid. So him running around the hotel, smashing stuff up while in his head, uh, he, as his brother, has ridiculously soft focus, bright pink lighting, large bosom sex with his missus. That's quite phenomenal. I think yeah, for that... I'd always think he's got a hell of an imagination for a drunk guy. Yeah, exactly. He's got exactly. Beautiful, beautiful lighting, a wind machine and everything. <laughs> right. It's what I'm not when I'm drunk. I always imagine uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme boffing a blonde. <laughs> Boff. Uh, <I> just... <laughs> Let me moat about your puppies. So... Uh... <laughs> Uh, the other one that I've seen that kind of that looks a lot like Double Impact, and because I think it takes place in Hong Kong, uh, is that well, you sent me the disc recently, but I had seen it online, Doc. Which is the what's the fashion one with what, knock what, off? Knock off. That's it. And it, is it Rob Schneider in that one? Y- yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's bloody yeah. bizarre. That one. Um, I mean, it's good action in it, great action in it, but it makes no sense why those two would ever have been paired up. On the streets of Hong Kong, a war is raging between the criminals who rule the city and the terrorists who threaten the world. One man is caught in the middle. And he'll need all the help he can get. Well, I've been working out. This summer, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Knock off. I, I see, it's one of those films that yeah, I think you can just watch. So I don't mind that film. Oh, I think we should, uh, we've should. we got to do another Jean-Claude Van Damme film soon, I think. Maybe that one. Yeah, let's knock one off. Uh, that's yeah. what I always like to say. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a couple more questions. We've got one from Mark Burns and one from Three Black Geeks. Do you want to take it away, Doc? Yes. Uh, Three Black Geeks. Geeks. What's a geek? Uh, (laughs) Three Black Geeks said, So we did a Jean-Claude Van Damme month back in April, and it was fun as hell. At any rate, what's your take on the quest? Did it come off as blood sport like to you guys? Snook? Uh, yeah, it's kind of just a period set remake of Bloodsport. And it wasn't it's not the film where he was supposed to make it with the guy who wrote Bloodsport with it, Frank Duke's guy. I think his name's the, in the title somewhere, isn't it? 
Yeah, because I think they had a bit big falling out and Frank just tried to sue him or something. But yeah, I, I think it's a good one. You know, it's Van Damme and Moore. That's a hell of a partnership. Yeah, right. I mean, Roger Moore is like the original Van Damme. Yeah. <laughs> He's like the proto Dam in a way. Uh, it, you know, in terms of the fact that they are both fans of the ladies, mm. I guess. Um, but no, I mean, I like I love Bloodsport. I also love the Quest. I can't really separate them because they, to, it, to my mind, they are. Once you've seen Bloodsport, you want more. You want you want, uh, and I don't mean you want Roger Moore. You want Roger Moore as well, but you want more of that kind of wonderful. Uh, set up and, and wonderful performance, wonderful fights, and all the rest of it. I think the only thing that is uh, where the quest is let down, where Bloodsport succeeds, is in the actual fights. I think everything around the fights and the lead up to it, maybe the quest does that slightly better. But the actual uh, the actual fights are better in Bloodsport. That's all I would say. I, I I like the quest though. How can you how can you not enjoy Roger Moore with a beard as a pirate? Teaming up with Jean Claude Van Damme as a clown. I mean, that's just phenomenal. <laughs> you can't... Like I said, when, when you uh, when you did the commentary and I, I wrote in saying it's a shame Moore didn't go on and like partner up with Seagal in the movie and then maybe Michael do it. He could have had a whole new second career. Right. No. Right hand man action star. He left me, Michael Caine, to bloody <laughs> go with Seagal. I said, <laughs> Moore, I came, have... <laughs> Moore came in to me and he said, Do you know what, Michael? I've been thinking about having this whole second career. And and I said to him, no, listen, Roger, turning up in shitty B-movies is my job. You, you stay at home and count your bloody bomb money. And that's exactly how it went. So that's why Michael yeah. ended up in uh, uh, on Deadly Ground. And that's the Toodle- thing. Toodaloo, Roger, I'm <laughs> off to make a Deadly Ground. You could turn up with me in a Michael Winner film and play the fool. You could do that. But you leave bloody Seagal alone, and that's 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 how it went. That's, that's actual. That's that's tape right there. That's not me doing it, but that's actual <laughs> tape that I I harvested from Kane's estate. It is. It's true. True. All well, true. I'm sorry you feel that way, Michael. I'll be going back to impregnate your daughter. Does he, <laughs> did he have a daughter? I don't even know if he has a daughter. But let's just say he does, and she's pregnant with Moore's child. <laughs> yeah, he fought round, fought round, she opened the door and all of a sudden a, a womb started expanding. <laughs> oh, I see you're pregnant. I only just raised my eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, my dear. Um, OK, and then one last question from none other than the man who's just bought an After Movie Diner T-shirt, so today he's one of my favourite people, Mr Mark Burns. He said, what the hell was Jay-Z-V... Jay-Z-V-D... Jay-Z! Jay-Z! <laughs> Jay-Z. What was he doing rapping? Uh, <laughs> doing, in that, doing in that leotard in Breakdance the movie. My name is Jean-Claude Van Damme, I will dance for you. My name is Jean-Claude Van Damme, I will dance for you. My name is Jean-Claude Van Damme, I will dance for you. My name is Jean-Claude Van Damme, I will dance for you. My name is Jean-Claude Van Damme, I will dance for you. My name is Jean-Claude Van Damme, I will dance for you. What can we say? Why was he in the leotard? Have you seen Breakdance the movie, Snoop? No, I've seen the clip he's in. Okay. And I think, I think the best. Um, where I ever heard that scene described was uh, I think it was in Empire and they were going on about like yeah, cameos from people before they were famous and said look out for Van Damme in the background dancing like he's just done a shit in his leotard <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that sums it up pretty much I, I would I would uh, I would love to know what that both looks like and feels like <laughs> uh, <laughs> having I don't think I've ever worn a leotard so no. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know what it was like to shit in one I, I imagine warming and comforting, it, you know, as long as it wasn't uh, uh, one of those painful Bernie poos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've all had him. Yeah, we've, we've all had him. Uh, I have him quite a lot because I live and eat in America, so that happens quite a bit. It's that bloody food over here is bloody rubbish. Um, but that's that's beside the point. So that, they're all the questions we had on Facebook. Uh, so let's let's delve more into uh, Snook's love of, of Van Damme. So you you first saw Kickboxer when you were very young, and mm. and since then have you sort of seen 
the majority of his stuff? How deep have you gone with his stuff? Have you got into like stuff like Derailed and In Hell, some of his more recent ones? Or? Yeah, there's, there's a few I still haven't seen, like those um, mid, like 2005, 2006 ones. Like, I haven't seen Inferno, Legionnaire, Replicant. Uh, Derailed is like one of his worst, one of the worst films of all time. I think yeah. have you seen Derailed? I have. I, I've seen it and own it proudly. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's really bad though. It's one mm. of those uh, come to the Eastern Bloc. We make movie now. It's one of those things, you know. Yeah, and you've got the you know the big train crash, which looks like a child's train set at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like the, what you mentioned on Facebook, the editing technique, like the editing and that is just so ADD. Yeah, I, I don't even think I managed to watch the whole thing. I, mean, I think I was forty five minutes in. I was like, it's not going to get any better. I'm just going to turn it off. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's Die Hard on a Train, isn't it? That's basically mm. what it's attempting to be. But it's Die Hard on a Train as if made by some rather simple children. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a really bad version of Under Siege 2. Yeah, they, that's they exactly what it's really. like. um, Have you seen that one, Doc? I don't think I've seen that one. I've seen Replicant. Okay. I've seen that. That's not too bad. And uh, have you seen... Oh, what's that one? The Shepherd. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I really like that one. That's one with Scott Atkins is about. Yeah, it. that is that is a good film. That is. Yeah, that's I really good. That one. And yeah, anything with Scott Atkins and Van Damme. I mean, I like that pairing a lot. Yeah, Assassination Games is a great film. Yeah, it is. It's a really, it's a really good one. Uh, have you so Snoop? What <clears throat> what to you is the if you had to pick like a quintessential five or six movies that you know you couldn't live without as far as JCVD is concerned? What are we looking at and why? Uh, well, probably Kickboxer, because like I said, it was the first one I saw, and it's probably still uh, my favourite one. Um, I don't know. It, I just love I think the end fight is brilliant in that. I mean, it's over-edited, it's over-edited as it is, because like, obviously Van Damme edited it himself, because, you know, there's loads of slow motion shots of his arse, and <laughs> <laughs> lots of you know, repeated kicks that are ridiculously over the top, but it's a fun movie. Of course, you've got Van Damme dancing in it. Nice. And I think we can, we can both agree that Van Damme's a better dancer than Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Although Seagal wins out of sheer enthusiasm and insanity, I think. Mm, oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 Uh, otherwise, I'd probably say Hard Target. You know, but you both know why it's a classic. Uh, later, I like a lot of the later ones he did before JCVD. Like I think In Hell's a really good underrated movie. Uh, Wake of Death's a good one. Um, Until Death, lots of death. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'd, say, I'd say Double Impact as well. That was a big favourite when I was younger. Talked and have you seen the Behind Closed Doors series that they screened in the UK? Oh, yeah, that was brilliant. I yeah. was watching it with um, you know, my girlfriend at the time hated anything action-related or anything like that. But she'd watched that, with, and all she could take out of it was, God, he cries all the fucking time. Yeah, well, that's where I got the whole thing. That's where I got the whole puppies joke from because there's yeah. that whole bit in the the episode where he where his son doesn't he his son adopts or steals I think steals from some children <laughs> a puppy in Romania I think that's what they do I think I think there's some edited out footage of a of a little girl crying somewhere being like my puppy crackers is gone I don't know why the dog is called I don't know why the dog <laughs> is called crackers it's insane. But it is, uh, <laughs> so yeah. I think that's what happened. The, the, the but then they and then they find out that this dog that they stole has got like every disease known to man, <laughs> yeah, and really should that. probably just be put down. <laughs> but but no, I love the puppies, and I want to weep on them and use them to wipe up my tears. And that happens a lot. In the, and then there's that weird bit where he's standing outside the Catholic church, weeping about the fact that he used to have an ego. That's incredible. Yeah, I used to. Man. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's but that's what he says, doesn't he? About Snoop with the with the way he's making some movie. Was it the quest he was talking about, or some other movie he tried to get no, off the ground? No, it was that. Um, it's called, what was called Full Love, then it was called The Eagle Path. It still hasn't been released. He made it in like 2010. He keeps re-editing it all the time. Right, I see. Is and it, isn't it one of like isn't it his on Deadly Ground? It's all about the environment and stuff. A- apparently, yeah. Apparently, the yeah. last ten minutes to the like on Deadly Ground just loads of shots of the environment, and it's apparently really bizarre. Yeah, I, I think he should just release it and do some really insane commentary over the top of it. I oh, think that's, probably. and then we just we just watch it with the comment. You don't watch it as a movie; you watch it as some sort of <laughs> mad two-hour performance art piece. Yeah, I would watch. I would watch that definitely. Yeah, they put some like melancholy organ music underneath it. 
<laughs> and it's just him going, I cannot believe the polar bears because they look like large puppies are dying. <laughs> and and it, underneath be- it's just like, oh. <laughs> That'd be amazing. And the, the, the forest, the forest, they'd be burnt. And the puppies, they scurry out of the forest. It's just this whole long, like him weeping and melancholy organ music. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Sorry, yeah, Doc, you were I, trying to say this. I say, uh, I cannot believe the polar ice bears are melting. <laughs> polar ice caps. I don't, I don't want to wear a cap. It would hurt <laughs> with these headphones on. That is not a good look for me. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I mean, that's why Jean-Claude Van Damme is my personal favourite, is because of his, uh, oh, that's one of the reasons why it, he's one of my favourites, is because of the weeping and the, um, his his earnest attempts to be a good man when clearly he's a bit of a, you know, a, a drug addict panty <laughs> raider. <laughs> <laughs> I do think he, he might be slightly insane after watching all every episode of that documentary. He comes across as really eccentric sometimes. And I don't know if that's just because of all the drug use over the years or what, but it's it's mixed for an entertaining program, though. Definitely. French. <clears throat> the, French yeah. the, the French. Well, the Belgians. <laughs> really, it's the Belgians. Um, they are... They're, they're, a, they're, a, they're a people without an identity, torn between the insane Germans on one side and the arrogant French on, on the other, <laughs> with the pot-smoking uh, Dutch. So they're kind of attacked on all sides by uh, these very kind of strong personalities. And I think that leaves yeah. the Belgians in a sort, sort of uh, interesting quandary, I think, personally. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'd agree with that. I think that explains Van Damme to a T. <laughs> uh, so, wh- how, how shocked are you guys that he's not had any major offers since The Expendables 2? That was the question I was going to ask. It's like you read my mind. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see? <laughs> yeah, I think it's 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 pretty... Well, I don't know, what has, he, what has he done lately? He did a UFO movie, which looks pretty terrible. Uh, I can't. I don't know what what's he got coming up next. Well, it's Attack the Block with Van Damme, isn't it? Basically, yeah, pretty much. But isn't he only in it for about ten minutes? Sort of like an extended cameo. Well, he did that Rumble in the Jungle or whatever it is. <laughs> Welcome to the Jungle or whatever the um, uh, comedy movie where he mm. plays like a guy. But I, these strike me as movies that were either being made or he was contractually obligated to before X Two came out and was a hit. Mm. Um. He's got Swelter coming out, which is meant to be a fairly big... Uh, action drama thriller. I'm just looking at that now. Because um, I know Six Bullets actually came out before X2. Obviously, Day of Reckoning. Welcome to the Jungle, you know, looks pretty poor, just from the trailers. Uh, uh, enemies, en- cl- enemies Closer. That's another Peter Hyams joint, so that might be good. Yeah, that'll yeah. probably be good. The Universal Soldier's pretty damn good. That one's good that he's in. I still haven't seen the last Universal Soldier yet, but it looks really good. It is good. Scott Atkins is great in it. Some good mm, yeah. fights in it. It starts off like a horror, so you know it's kind of. Uh, yeah, I've heard it's quite. S- I've heard it's quite dark compared to the rest of them. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's not really. I mean it's only the fact that you got Jean Claude Van Damme playing Luke Devereaux and Dolph Lundgren, and it, it makes it a Universal Soldier film. It's like a horror film that sort of turns into this really. Violent action film. Yeah, it's two thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, it's a good film. Definitely go, definitely go and check that out. I was, um, was going to say, I think it's probably when you're saying about like roles he hasn't gotten after Expendables, it's probably more surprising that he didn't get more offers after JCVD. Yeah, Where that's true. He can act, yeah, very. But I mean, I just think that you know when you look at. I know Dolph Lundgren was beginning to churn them out, but after Expendables 1, he really, you know, hits this streak of doing sort of seven or eight movies a year. Mm. Obviously, uh, once Arnie came out of office, he's he's gone into doing... In fact, they've just announced another movie that Arnie's doing, a zombie movie. So he's got like eight or nine things lined up. Obviously, Statham has gone into overdrive in terms of churning movies out since Expendables... I don't know about Jet Li. I don't know what sort of whether Jet Li parlayed it into anything or whether he just sort of carried on the way he was doing. But then obviously you've got Randy Couture went off and did Hijacked. So there's there's sort of there's stuff coming out off the back of the Expendables. You know what I mean? And it's just odd that Van Damme didn't 
you know, maybe he's contracted to these, like, pieces of shit shot in Belarus, you know, <laughs> or wherever. Maybe he's contracted to this stuff uh, for the next few years and he just can't get out of it. I don't know. But it, it's, it just seems odd to us here at, uh, at the show that he hasn't, you know, he hasn't either gone the Lundgren route and, you know, bashed out eight or nine really pretty decent movies because the Lundgren ones aren't bad. They're all fairly watchable. He hasn't done that. Or he hasn't done, like, just one big, you know, studio movie. Or some studio head didn't get him, like, oh, can we get him to play the bad guy in something else, you know? Yeah, because after Expendable 2, I had bad hope that every year from now on we'd see a theatrical Van Damme and it was going to be a big comeback, but it doesn't seem to be the case, really. No, instead, weirdly... I mean, maybe not over in England, but weirdly over here with his trips to Russia and the third season of Lawman being unearthed and a bunch of other stuff that's going on, Seagal is, like, back in the news in a big way. It's completely weird. Yeah, it is weird. Because he doesn't, he doesn't have, like, many movies out, but he's got the... He did those two TV series, which were, I know made into movies in the UK, uh, Real Justice or whatever, it's True Justice or whatever it's called, which is on the Reels channel over here. They've just unearthed, like I said, the third season of Lawman, so that's finally going to get released. That's the one where he drives over a puppy in a tank, <laughs> trying to break up a cockfighting ring, allegedly. Mm. Uh, <laughs> which, which you just couldn't... Like, if you sat down and tried to put insane things from your mind into a sentence, you couldn't... You couldn't get much funnier than Steven Seagal drives over puppy in tank trying to break up <laughs> cockfighting ring. It's he's, just... He's probably not even... It's really not that. It's probably just two gay guys in bed together. He goes, book, book him for cockfighting, Johnny. <laughs> We're not going to be having that around here. Not in Arizona. We don't... <laughs> me and Joe Arpaio, we don't put up with that kind of shit. Um, but yeah, no, so it's... Over his puppy. <laughs> although Seagal hasn't been in... The Expendables, I mean, he was in Mach- Machete, of course, but he hasn't been in The Expendables yet. Mm. Uh, there is a sort of groundswell. I mean, <laughs> there's always a groundswell under Seagal because he eats too many bison. But uh, there, there's, there's kind of a sort of... The world is looking at Seagal again a little bit, I think, in a weird mm. way. Um, I think what my favourite thing, just going back to that story about the tank, I think my favourite thing in the new story of that was the quote from Seagal was something like, um, "Animal cruelty is uh, one of my biggest pet peeves." <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> just like the environment, even though in on deadly ground he just blows stuff up. Yeah, he's got two horses on a spit. <laughs> yeah, which isn't very good for. <laughs> and also, doesn't in in Longman doesn't he drive around in like a big SUV? Mm-hmm. I, care, I care about the environment, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I usually like to use my jetpack to go and look for crime. <laughs> <laughs> no, Seagal on a jetpack. That. Oh, you'd watch that. Oh. I'd, everybody would watch that. Wouldn't you just, wouldn't that that'd be if amazing? It, if it could take off. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Put more fuel in it, Johnny. I tell you what, fuck it, I'll wear two. Uh, <laughs> where's one on the front, one on the back? It's burning, on it's burning my willy, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we've devolved into a cigar conversation. It's meant to be Van Damme. So, favourite scenes, people. Let's talk favourite scenes, Doc. Favourite scene. Uh, or favourite fights, whatever. Uh, I think I see Hard Target is a big favourite of mine. I love that last scene in the uh, the warehouse. I think that's great. That's why I always think of when I think of Jean-Claude the Van Damme, I think. With a burning Lance Henriksen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like yeah. my see my favorite bit about Hard Target is the old dude. What's his name um, with the mustache? Wilford, Wilford Brimley. Him mm, on yeah. the horse. That's my favorite yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, there's a few good favorite scenes in Hard Target, especially like the the early fight outside the diner. And also, yeah, that was quite that's a good best. fight scene. Snapping a guy's arm and kicking that guy who looks like George Michael through a window. <laughs> Wake me up And then uh, we had the, the end fight, obviously, the end gun battle, which is like 15 minutes long and, you know, classic John Roof stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good scene. I do, I mean, I like, the, I like the stuff in Time Cop. I like it where he kicks that guy's arm off 
in the um, when he's put once he put on his arm. It's been so long since I've seen time cut off the belly, remember it? He, he freezes it, then kicks it, doesn't he? Oh, is it like liquid nitrogen or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. That was pretty good. I like the bit where he sort of walks back, you know, he goes through time and all of a sudden, you know, he gets run over by the truck. That looks pretty, that looks pretty good. good I, like, I like the stilt chase at the beginning of the quest. That's one of my favourites. <laughs> <laughs> Just the enormous floppy hat. It's a brave, it's a brave costuming choice. Uh... I love I love almost everything in Double Impact, but especially anything with Jeffrey Lewis. It's oh, Jeff, yeah, Jeff, it, Lewis. It is Jeffrey Lewis, right? The bald guy yeah. who's all enraged yeah. and sweaty. Yeah. Uh, I like him. You just like sweaty bald men, don't you? I, really? do, I do. I love them. Can't get enough. <laughs> I'm having a cut down. My doctor says that it's it's doing me physical and mental harm. Um, I'm trying to think. I loved Assassination Games. I thought that was really good. And it's interesting to see post-JCVD how he's... Or Jesse Vede, uh, how he has been kind of playing more kind of serious, thoughtful characters. There is action in his later movies, but it tends to be behind a wall of, I am in deep torment. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I kind of like that. He's kind of growing old, you know, gracefully. Is that what he, said? <laughs> that what he say when he, when he goes for auditions now? So, do you think you want the role? Does my character have some deep torment? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'm surprised like. he's—I'm surprised he's never grown a beard because Hollywood d- d- demands that if you are feeling uh, any form of inner turmoil, that that a beard is grown. Yeah, that's that's just Hollywood shame. law. I think he has a beard in um, in Hell at, some, at one point. Yeah, I think well, he has a beard in the Quest at one point as well. Yeah, mm. it's uh, it's not quite as luscious as Seagal's uh, <laughs> current goatee. It's just it's <laughs> yeah. just for men we, we took, sharpie we took... goatee. <laughs> just so it looks like a fucking weave. I think, right. just, I think he's just cut a bigger hole in a merkin and just stuck that <laughs> on his face, person. And, and he also has... Uh, uh, Seagal has... I've not yet seen it, but he has a glue-on beard in one of the episodes of True Justice, which I have to see. I just have to see that. I don't know how I haven't witnessed that. I, I just found True Justice so difficult to watch because it's filmed by a ADD spastic. Yeah, I think I only managed to sit Fair through it. 15 minutes of one episode. Yeah, no, right. Is and it plus, being released? The only it... episode I saw had him singing. So. <laughs> there's one of him <laughs> singing in an episode? Mm, yeah, oh. the, the very first scene. It, there was the first episode I saw, and I wasn't surprised that it was said, written by Steven Seagal, and the first shot was him with these guitars. Like, oh, God. Nice. <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to... I don't know if it's being released. What's weird is they've released the movies over here and the TV shows on... I kind of want them to release the TV show rather than the films. I want to make sure I'm getting everything, every last drop of goodness. And do you think, ah, this is the thing, if, okay, let's cast a Jean-Claude Van Damme TV show. So he's got to play something and do something and we're going to have an ongoing, you know, Seagal's go-to is like, I'm a special cop. He doesn't (laughs) have to abide by the law because I'm special. But I have lots of special training. And so that's his go-to, but... Did you? Did you? Uh, I never keep going off the subject of Van Damme, but did you see that uh, video that somebody posted on our uh, page about Seagal when Brandon Lee got killed making the crow? Yeah, <laughs> and, he, and he says, uh, he says <clears throat> "I said to the, uh, I said to the pathologist, I said, I bet it's a bullet. They killed him, <laughs> you know, from a gun. Yeah, who would have thought it?" Yeah. Then, <laughs> I just imagine yeah. him bursting into the pathologist's <laughs> office. Wait, wait, don't start cutting him open until I'm here. I know all the special expert stuff. <laughs> he says, he says, uh, he says, you rang me right now. He said, Stephen, he says, uh, you're a genius. I said, yeah, I know. And then uh, <laughs> he says, uh, we found a bullet. I said, I told you so. And did you know that knives stab people? <laughs> <Did you know? laughs> He's so full of shit. <laughs> but let's but let's uh, let's cast a uh, a Jean Claude Van Damme TV show. It's got to run at least six episodes. So it's got to have some sort of arc. But let's let's cast it. What 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 does he play? First of all, what's his character? Do we reckon? Probably something to do with dogs. Dogs. Pup. Something to do with puppies. Probably like a dog catcher. It was a change of heart and adopt all the puppies. He could train <laughs> um, like attack dogs for the uh, Secret Service. Yeah, that, I like that. Yeah, I would watch that. And he has all to wear a leather jacket. Small. Sorry, all creatures great small. 
Jean-Claude Van Damme is James Harriet. <laughs> That is right. I have moved to small Yorkshire town to stick my hand up Carl's ass. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could go silly and you could have him as like a vet in the countryside. And, and, and just like Midsummer Murders or whatever, there's always shit going on in the town, even though there's only five people live there. Someone's always like some visitor is always being murdered or, uh, you know, things are always being smuggled through that town or something like that. Uh, you know, he could be a vet in a small, dusty border town in America. With some inner torment. With some inner torment, <laughs> uh, which which requires him to have a greasy moulet and a three-day <laughs> beard. I'd like to see him do something back in, call it, call it you know, like Belgian blues, where he's like a detective. <laughs> he just wears just... all denim the whole yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, and a, t- and a uh, bolo tie. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, he's just so- solving, like, the most shittiest crimes ever. <laughs> JCVD Blue. That's <laughs> yeah, they... There you go. <laughs> and, and, and they bring Dennis Franz back. Yeah, and, and with their uh, cut-out buttocks. Because everybody <laughs> liked that so much about NYPD Blue the time he showed his ass. <laughs> Isn't Dennis Fra- Is Dennis Franz still alive? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, he is. He is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think I think we should have Dennis Franz and Jean Claude Van Damme team up in uh, <laughs> in JCVD Blue, and it's set <laughs> <laughs> it's set in a, a small dusty border town, and uh, together they fight crime and strip at the local parlor, <laughs> the local like <laughs> saloon or whatever. And France get, does like buttock jiggling or whatever. I'd get Peter Salas in as his, uh, <laughs> his boss. <laughs> Very random, but I think it's the role that he was born to play. <laughs> it could really break him out, <laughs> but make him big time. Get the Salas name out there. Well, that went as well as could be expected, didn't it? Mm-hmm. I've never heard Peter Salas say fuck, and that's what I really <laughs> want to hear. <laughs> yeah. Now, don't you fuck around. You know, that's good. That is, that <laughs> don't is, you fuck, fuck around, fuck. Grummy. Um, yeah, for people who don't know, Peter Salas is in Last of the Summer Wine, one of the longest-running <laughs> sitcoms in England, and also was the voice of Wallace in Wallace and Gromit. Uh, <laughs> Lovely chap. He's about 140. <laughs> <laughs> he's been acting since he was three, so he's uh, <laughs> he's had a longer career than Seagal, that's for sure. Yeah, he played Jesus when Jesus was still around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he attended the first nativity, the real <laughs> nativity. Um, but no, I could, in all seriousness, though, I could see a kind of Dennis Franz, JCVD, cop, vet drama. Uh, so, like, Dennis Franz is a cop, Jean Claude Van Damme is a vet. Together, <laughs> they make up JCVD Blue. And they're like running through the desert in slow motion. Uh, Van Damme wearing. Oh, Dennis Franz is probably not running. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis Franz is being wheeled by two <laughs> on a, on a right shopping there. cart. John Claude Van Damme's got Dennis Franz in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a siren. Dennis Franz is holding a siren. Oh, and. and <laughs> And they travel through time. Yeah. <laughs> so you bring in a bit of time cop as well. See, why is HBO not putting that shit on? I don't know. That's going to get far more viewers than Game of Thrones. Throw tits in it and you have, a, <laughs> have yourself a series. Yeah. We want Jane Fonda in it as well. Dennis Franz every week. <laughs> 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 Dennis Fran should get the hottest girl every episode in it. <laughs> just just to make ugly men around the world feel good. Uh, they should be they should also be like borderline age so that you don't quite know what it is you're watching. And you're a little scared by the whole thing. You, you feel every time you're watching it, you're actually dialing the police. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute, I've just seen a show on TV. Where... And it, Where it, 19 it's year old kind of Dennis Franz. When 19-year-old Dennis Franz seems to be abusing a 15-year-old girl, I'm, I'm disturbed. They're like, no, don't worry, it's just HBO. 
Okay. <laughs> Uh, but that's yes. That okay. There we go. Then we've we've cast our ultimate John Claude Van Damme damn TV yeah. show. Chris did. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I would watch. That was what I was going to say exactly. <laughs> Is that what you've got right that wrote down in front of you? <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> He'd be like, it's, "It'll be bloody weird if they come up with this." Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not from. I'm not from Yorkshire. <laughs> no, I know. I can't do any other accent though. Um, what's uh, <laughs> what would you add to the mix? What would you put? Put in that show, so what, give us a give us a plot line or a character arc or something like that. Oh, yeah, give us the pilot. Uh, what can you add after all that? I've got no idea. Um, well, I'd, I'd have Dennis Brown instead of in a wheelbarrow, have him like riding a Great Dane or something. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have the dog thing in there a bit more, I think. Right. Oh, please... yeah. Well, he's a vet though, so every every week you have a you have a murder, like a police murder, and you have a, a dog problem. So every week they have like a B A plot and a B plot. They could be solving uh, do- uh, animal murders. Mm. So instead of like human murders, it'd be like animal murders. So it'd be like uh, you know they find a badger on, the, <laughs> uh, on, on like on like a motorway with you know like tire tracks all through him, and uh, Dennis fans would go, "Seems simple. It was run over." And John Claude Van Damme will come over and go, "This is not." Of, this is not random. This is a murder. And, and then they have to go off and figure out why this badge has been murdered. I think the trouble with that is, though, is that Van Damme would just weep too much. He'd never be able to say any lines because he'd always be lying down by the animal, cradling its head in his hands, weeping openly. And Dennis Friends would be like, are we going to go do this thing or what? Let's go off and do this. I know you love them. They got to go off and just solve it. Yeah, but what would you say? Would you what would you do as a pilot, Snoop? What would be your big thing? <laughs> 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 Sorry, are we putting you on the spot. Just a little bit. I mean, after all that barrage of craziness, I don't know what to add to it. I think it's perfect as it is. <laughs> it's perfect as it is. Don't 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 mess with the gold. Yeah, uh, pretty much. So, <laughs> so okay, how about this? What what the JCVD films did you watch today? So give us a rundown on those today. Yes. Uh, just, um, I just watched Maximum Risk because I wasn't sure if I'd actually ever seen it before. And I think it only caught maybe the last 20 minutes on TV. And I really, I think that's honestly one of his better films from the 90s, like Paul's Tar Target when he was working with every Hong Kong director that was coming to America and stuff. It's, it it yeah, almost feels... Yeah, that's a isn't it? Yeah, it almost feels as well like an, an 80s action movie. You got a lot of gritty New York setting, which you, you're never going to see again. I miss all that type of stuff. But yeah, it's, it's a really cool movie. I like it. A lot. I really like it. I, tell you, I, I also like uh, Double Team with Mickey Rourke. Is that the one with why. Dennis Rodman? Yeah. I don't know why, but I watched it. I think I've only ever seen it once. Yeah. I, think, but, yeah. Uh, I, I finished watching it. I thought, I really enjoyed that. And then I went and looked and seen what everybody else thought, and I thought it was shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yeah, I enjoyed that one. Definitely enjoyed that double team, but Maximum Risk is one that I I've always liked. I think it's, I think it's a really good film. In the one with Dennis Rodman, does he push him around in a wheelbarrow? <laughs> oh, that's where. I, uh, yeah, sorry, it wasn't original. Oh, that's what happens in there. <laughs> yeah, great, <clears throat> and he doesn't need a siren because his hair is loud enough as it is. Yeah, he keeps colouring it every time. In a different scene, so it actually does give that sort of siren effect. Nice, nice, and um, <clears throat> Mill Creek. Uh, Entertainment, who put out sort of shitty DVDs in the US, actually posted a picture of Jean Claude Van Damme today because I think they're releasing uh, Universal Soldier The Return as oh, yeah. second, in com- a second in command double feature, I think. I wasn't a big fan of Universal Soldier The Return. I don't know about no, you. What did you think, though? Hmm? No, I don't, it's, not, uh, it's not a particularly great film. I think. Uh, the Universal Soldier films have sort of disregarded it now anyway, haven't they? Yeah, have you I seen think, Regeneration? Yeah. That's sort of like carried straight on from Universal <laughs> Universal Soldier. They went, what about the one with uh, Goldberg and Michael J. White? Sorry? <laughs> yeah, we, did, we, did, we didn't make that one. So I think they've just totally disregarded it. That's probably so. why Mill Creek is putting it out then. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and what is Second in Command? Has anyone ever seen that? Uh, Got that. I haven't watched it yet. Though. I've had it for a while. It's, uh, I've never seen it. Have you seen it, Doc? I've got it. Did I, did I send you a copy, John? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, maybe maybe not, then. 
Yeah. Uh, no, I've not seen. I've not seen that. But uh, just a minute. Let me have a look. Probably have seen it. Da, 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 da. Second in command. I've got it. I don't think I've watched it yet. And and Snook, if you were going to have in Expendables three, would you rather see Mel Gibson, which is what they're saying is going to happen, mm. or Jean Claude Van Damme coming back as Villain's twin brother? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'd probably go with the twin brother thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's it maybe a too much of a cheesy angle for the Expendables, but. I don't know. I, I, was, I, was, I knew he was going to die at the end of Expendables 2, obviously, but it would have been nice to maybe just put him in jail and bring him back to the third one, because I don't know, he was too good in it to kill him off, I think. Yeah, I mean, there was there was talk of the third one being... I mean, when the second one first came out, Stallone said, who knows, the third one might be them versus aliens. He oh. was he was even considering taking the, the, the franchise off into, like, complete fantasy. So there's no reason why the aliens couldn't, like... Bring Valan back to life or something. <laughs> <laughs> that is that. Well, as soon as I saw that, I thought I'd check the date, see if it was April the first, and then I was worried about uh, Sly Stallone going up and taking a lot of drugs. <laughs> that, that was, I was just like, what? I, no, I don't I, know. I, I could, I could honestly see an Expendables movie every year where. Uh, or every other year, where they go up against different. So it doesn't have to be like Earthbound. It could you could have one in. They could do like a horror franchise. You have one in space. They could have one in the hood. They could have you know. They, they could really go wherever they want. Really. Don't come on my patch. They could have. They could have one in hell. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Though there's like endless scope for that group of people. Oh, you mean do, do, when he says aliens? Do, does it mean new types of aliens or aliens? No, he in... means like predator. Like he means like it, like in Predator, Arnie goes up against an alien. Uh, the Expendables could go up against some aliens. Oh right, it's not like the, not like Mexican biggest... immigrants. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that'd be tense in the cinema. <laughs> oh, those aliens! Yeah. Well, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> uh, oh, have you seen? Has anyone seen Kung Fu Panda Two? Because he does a I voice have. in that, doesn't he? Yeah, I have seen that. I thought the only reason I watched it was because Van Damme did a voice. <laughs> nice. It's not bad. It's quite fun. That's all right. I haven't seen Ooh. any of those. I've uh, not, not seen any. Of those. I'm just looking down. I'm looking down. So you you would recommend Wake of Death and In Hell then? Because I have that as part of. My triple bill. I have In Hell, Derailed, and Wake of Death. Do you think they're pretty good then? Yeah, I'd reckon. In Hell's really good. It's a good. Um, it's yeah, not it's really. Good. It's not really an action movie. There's a few fight scenes in it, but it's more of just a grimy prison movie, really. And he yeah. plays Carl LeBlanc in it. Now, is he some relative of, or meant to be some relative of Matt LeBlanc? Is yeah, it like a Joey spinner? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme goes into running his prison and says, "There." Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> hey! Um, and then, <laughs> what is the secret adventures of Gustav Klopp? Have you ever heard of that movie? Uh, I've heard of it. I think it's more, it's just got a, a brief cameo in it, I think. One of those type of things. Oh, okay, sounds, fair enough. Sounds enthralling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going down. Desert Heat. What do we think of Desert Heat? Anyone seen that? I haven't seen that now. That's uh, that's the one that's also called Inferno, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I've not seen. I've I've got that one as well. It looks. It's supposed to be not a bad film, actually. And the one we haven't talked about, Sudden Death, which I would probably put like if I have a top three, it's probably Sudden Death, um, uh, Double Impact, and uh, Bloodsport. Yeah, I really like Sudden Impact. I mean, you know, it's a it's a you can class it as a sort of diehard in an ice rink type right. of movie, but it's a really solid action movie. I think. I think I saw that one in the cinema, and there was just me, my friend, and two rather suspicious-looking backpackers. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a silly experience, but I enjoyed the movie. We will go into cinema, and we will watch the Jean-Claude Van Damme in <laughs> Sudden Death. I have heard good things about it, Sergei. I have <laughs> travelled all the way from here to watch it because it's not showing in my native country and I do like Jean-Claude Van Damme. Gregor, shall we take off our backpack? No, let us leave it on so we appear more suspicious. 
I don't know why they're they're from <laughs> Eastern Europe or, or from Russia or wherever that accent is. But uh, one that's... day we meet John Claude Van Damme when he comes to our country to make lots of shit movies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we obviously have... Has anyone seen uh, Black Eagle? Yeah, that's the film I started watching when I was about nine, and I still haven't finished it. Because <laughs> I, pick, I picked that up recently, so I need to watch that. Obviously, we've got Cyborg. That was a that was an early uh, big movie for, for Van Damme. What is our feeling on Cyborg? I love Cyborg. That's one of my favourites. Um, when we, we reviewed Cyborg and... Uh, my old podcast and the director got in contact and you know thank you for all the nice words and stuff. But because we always took the piss out of Segal, he said he was going to pass the show on to Segal. <laughs> thankfully, that never happened. But Albert it Bryan, been, it would have been interesting if it did. Yeah, Albert Bryan. Yeah. Oh wow! So you had you had prestigious listeners then. Did you reach out to him, or, or was that just something where he contacted you out of the blue? Yeah, just out of the blue. I have noticed that he does seem to do that quite a bit. Actually, he's like quite. Um, I think he's quite active on the IMDb board. I don't know, maybe he Googles himself a lot, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, we all do, we're all men. Don't, don't we? Yeah, we all do that. I, I <laughs> gave myself a good Google before we started to record, so <laughs> that way I'm not tempted to do it during the recording, as that can often lead to me having to do way more editing than I want to. Um, uh, I'm just looking through. Uh, have you seen the clip of him being the gay karate man in Monaco Forever? That That... Surfaced online recently. Yeah, I remember, you, I remember you used to be able to get a double feature video, VHS of that with uh, Stallone's Italian Stallion porno. Nice. I always regret not buying that. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be a double a double bill for the ages. <laughs> yeah. I I would have to say though, I mean, when you look through Van Damme's uh, list of movies, most of the titles are pretty well known. I mean, I know you get into kind of. You know, after sort of, I guess, Desert Heat, uh, mm. they become a little bit more obscure to, to, like, your average viewer. But then, but everything up until then, I mean, you know, most people on the street, if you sort of said Van Damme to them, I, I would imagine would know, like, Nowhere to Run, Hard Target, Time Cop, Universal Soldier, Double Impact. Like, they're all movies that are fairly big. You know, he's had a... What I'm saying is, he's had a pretty good run of it. You know, the, uh, Seagal has, like, the first... Eight or ten movies that he did are like probably worth probably worth watching, and the rest are kind of for hard, you know hardcore fans, or you know sadists and um, or masochists, rather. But Van Damme's movies are pretty top draw all the way up until kind of two thousand. It goes a bit shaky, but then kind of comes back in oh eight when he sort of starts working with uh, Scott Atkins. I just I'm not sure what this Alien Uprising, Welcome to the Jungle, Enemies Closer and Swelter period is meant to be. I think with Jean Claude Van Damme, I think any time he's on screen he's worth a watch. He's always entertaining. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'd still I'll still watch uh, most of the stuff he's in. I mean even even the stuff, you know, in the late two thousands, you know, they they're not they're not Steven Seagal bad. Well no. Because his films his films over there are just utter. I mean, at least Jean Claude Van Damme bothers to stay around so, you know, they can film him doing some of his fight scenes. Yeah, or he bothers to stay around to ADR the dialogue. Yeah. I actually watched the Seagal movie the other day. It was Born to Raise Hell. And in that, I I, I honestly couldn't... I, I could not... I'd never seen this done before in any other film ever. There was <clears throat> a whole opening monologue. And I was thinking to myself, is that meant to be Seagal? Because it, 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 it clearly wasn't Seagal. It was worse than us. Like, we do our, like, you know, hello, Johnny, kind of Seagal voice. It was worse than that. It was literally someone kind of, <laughs> kind of mumbling like that. And then I thought, okay, maybe so not, maybe okay. he just didn't stick around to do a voiceover and they had to do a voiceover and really the voiceover could be anybody. You know, it could be like a, a, a kind of anyone else. It could just be a third party narrating this movie. But then I noticed that halfway through the film, they started replacing his dialogue with the same guy doing this voice that sounds nothing like... And I was like, wait a minute, is that meant to be Seagal talking? That's insane. Who looked at that and went, yeah, we can put that out? I, I don't understand. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, the, the studio have to put out a film and it's got to have Seagal because, you know, he's done all the... Uh, he's given his permission from to Photoshop his face into all these... Uh, <laughs> Rescue the people on the poster, and uh, 
He must like just look through the look through the script, and his arrogance must just be like, "Yeah, I'm not saying that. Get somebody else." And he'll he'll just he'll just do the role, you know, the bits that he wants to do. But what was crazy is he was down as a writer and a producer on the film. So he loathed it so much he couldn't even... He was like, yeah, I wrote it and I produced it, but fuck that movie. I'm going on to do the next fucking batshit Eastern European load of shit. I mean, I don't understand, but uh, do do we have anything else to say on the subject of uh, JCVD? Uh, Well, I was going to... Not to bring it down, but I was just going to see what you both thought were his worst... What his worst film was, I guess. I mean, I guess the worst one I've seen is Derailed. Yeah, I would say Derailed, yeah. The worst Jean-Claude Van Damme film? Mm. Uh, let me have a think. I'm not, sure, I'm not too sure, actually. Uh... I wished JCVD had more action in it. I mean, I know what it was trying to do and trying to say, and it was kind of cool, but I wish that he had started to like kick the shit out of the bad guys sooner. Yeah. yeah, 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 I would agree, yeah. Uh, I, I think for me, it probably, it probably would be uh, Universal Soldier, The Return, I think, for me. Yeah, that's it's, um... it's, Yeah, I didn't enjoy that. And plus, it was a bit of a wasted opportunity because you've got Michael Jai White in there, and it's a shame that they were put together in such a shitty film. It'd be yeah. nice to see them do another film together, I think, at some point. Yeah, should, uh, Expendables 3 should have all been in that. Mm Face off again. That'd have been nice. Or put them both in a remake of Face Off. <laughs> I, think I've, I've just, I think I've just spoken for it. I think I've just done it there. One's Belgian, <laughs> one's black. <laughs> that would work. But, yeah, but, yeah, but what I wouldn't do is I'd have a, I wouldn't change the rest of the skin colour. So right. how, how crazy would it look with uh, John Claude Van Damme running around with like a black body? <laughs> and. <laughs> Michael Jai White was w- w- looking like uh, what's, what's the jazz thing you think? Al Jolson. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Way to, way to take it into some sort of dark racist territory. I like it. <laughs> no, it's, it's not that. Huh? It's a film. I know. What, so you're saying that Michael Jai White would have to go on in white face <laughs> and JCVD no, 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 would have no, no, to go no. on in black no, no, no. face. No. Or, are we, or are we talking what? CGI? Would CGI... CGI? CGI and you put Michael Jai White face on John Clyde Van Damme's body. Nice. Okay. <laughs> sure. Let's do that then. <laughs> um, I just noticed as well, he's in Missing in Action, uncredited, with uh, Chuck Norris and James Hong. Yeah. Yeah, I've just seen that. It's like, it was a dri- it just says driver, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember seeing, seeing him in it. I, I, try, I try not to watch Norris movies. No, <laughs> I haven't seen. I think I've only seen probably like two. I think I've seen Delta Force two and Missing in Action. I think that's it. Is and, nowhere oh, to, Here's a here's a question: Is Nowhere to Run his most cigar esque movie? What do you mean by cigar esque? In in the sense that he plays a stranger who rides into town and saves a. You know, it's got like the most kind of A team plot, which a lot of like Seagal's early stuff has. Mm. You know, I'm thinking of like Fire Down Below and stuff. It has that kind of stranger rides into town and saves a dusty uh, desert California town from ruin. It's got that sort of vibe to it. That sort of western yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember there was a, there was made, they made a big deal out of that at the time because really he doesn't do any trademark Van Damme stuff. There's no splits, there's no kicks or anything. It's more of a drama more than anything else. Right. I've got to say, it's not one that I always go back to. No. I think I've, I think I've probably ever, only ever seen it twice. It's, Except for Rosanna Arquette Booby. Mm, yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, that's about it, really. Um, yeah. You know, and the fine acting chops of Kieran Culkin, because who can, <laughs> you know, who can really resist the wonder that is Kieran Culkin? He's such a, <laughs> such a strong presence. He's a talented little bastard. What, what's the last film he did? I don't know. I, I don't know at all. He, it's also got, of course, Joss Ackland in it, our favourite. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Diplomatic community. <laughs> Diplomatic community. And flip and flip. Joss Ackland is completely lunatic. Uh, complete lunatic. Have you seen his IMDb picture? No. 
Just, yeah, it's insane. <laughs> he looks like Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> um, yeah, just seen it. Uh, <laughs> hello, hello. Like, I'm... <laughs> that, is, that is pretty damn awesome, that is. It is. Uh, I hope yeah. I get old like Josh Ackman. That'd be great. <laughs> Big flabby old face, what a lunatic. <laughs> and it's got Ted Levine, Ted Mangina Levine, <laughs> as Mr. Dunstan, which I was like, anyone anyone named after a, a, a monkey? <laughs> Zid, we are answer your question, Snoop. What was the question, sorry? About the worst movie, did we answer the question? Oh, yeah, yeah, I would say Derailed. I'm sure a lot of people would say Derailed and Universal Soldier The Return. I would say Black Eagle, but like I said, I've, I've, I've tried to watch it so many times, I just thought it was really boring, so I don't know. Maybe I'm missing out on one of his, you know, undiscovered greats, but I will have to watch it. I might watch it this week, actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to finally watch Black Eagle. Nice, nice. You know, the action scenes in it are not too bad. I think it's just everything else. Mm. There's uh, Shaq Sugi and Jean-Claude Van Damme have some, you know, pretty good there. Uh, I mean... It was, you know, because I think they, they sort of released Black Eagle more after Bloodsport to sort of say, capitalise on the Jean Claude Van Damme name. I think so, yeah. So, I mean, that was a, I can't remember that being, you know, a pretty big deal, you know, that star of Bloodsport meets the ninja himself. Yeah. So, it, you know, it was a, it was kind of a big deal at that time. It was always an that... impact. Yeah, that might have been another reason I didn't like it as much because I've obviously going off the box thought Van Damme was the main star and he's not really, he's kind of just a henchman. Yeah, he is, yeah. He's the, he's the Russian, isn't he? Mm. With the Belgium accent. It would also be the shortest Seagal movie ever made because he'd just tased the eagle. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of eagle is it, Johnny? It's a black yeah. eagle, Stephen. Oh, get me the taser. I'll take that yeah. fucker down. You're in danger. I'll eat you. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think with that, I think we've covered, I think we've, this is possibly the most in-depth Jean-Claude Van Damme po- podcast that's ever been done. Yeah. It's definitely the most serious one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I guess the only thing we haven't touched on is the whole, like, his kickboxing record or whatever. Do you mm. believe the whole it's in question thing, or do you just like, nah, fuck it, he was, a, he was a kickboxer. Or, like me, do you think it doesn't matter, he's a movie actor? Yeah, I don't really think it matters. Uh, there was something a couple of years ago where people, someone did try and um, discredit his kickboxing record, because they said they couldn't find any record of a Jean-Claude Van Damme as a kickboxer, but it was because he used his original name, so yeah. if that's the case, then fair enough. But it doesn't matter really. I mean, I always, you know, hated it when you'd see, you know, like Seagal come out and try and discredit them and stuff when Seagal hasn't done any form of competitive fighting in his life. Right. And, yeah, you know. yeah, the whole, yeah, I've never understood it. Also, they're all like action movie stars. Mm. And if we're talking, you know, great uh, action movie stars, someone like Chuck Norris is an official, like, Ninth Dan Black Belt, whatever the fuck. Like he's a he's a has been a competitive fighter. Yet his fight scenes are some of the most tedious that have ever been filmed. <laughs> yeah, so my that's true. my feeling always is is like yeah, the real thing is all very well and good. But you look at someone like Statham who has never competed yet, clearly has trained over and over and over again and continues to train in a wide variety of mixed martial arts. And his fight scenes are thrilling. Like in every movie, his fight scenes. So I think to be a movie fighter, real, you know, having competed on the international stage as a as a as a fighter is sort of irrelevant. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. But I'm sure if you brought up that up to Sagali, would laugh in your face. Yeah, he would. <laughs> <laughs> laugh in your face. Do you notice that? Uh, do you think Statham and, and Norris have got bad blood? Because they didn't share a scene, did they, in um, The Expendables 2, did they? Why would they have bad blood? Is there a reason behind that? Because he's, like you say, he's not a, he's not a champion, but his films are ten times better than Chuck Norris's. Yeah, I mean, probably. And also because Chuck, have... Chuck Norris knows in the back of his head Statham could take him. Yeah, I mean, do you think uh, there's that scene where um, Statham comes back and he's like, 
Yeah, what well, happened then? And Stacey, yeah, Stallone sort of goes, oh, Norwich, and uh, Stacey goes, can't. <laughs> <laughs> Was that in a deleted scene that only you've seen, Doc? Yeah, and Stacey sent that through to me. I was nice. Like, Fist pumping. Nice. Yeah, and uh, Norris is just uh, walking off, sort of keep looking behind him at Statham, and Statham's going, that's why you keep walking, you bearded twat. <laughs> I'll fucking kick your ass, mate. And then it cuts round to Norris and just a single tear <laughs> just rolls down his cheek. <laughs> I'm coming up your ass. And he goes, he goes, it's true, it's true, he could kick my ass. <laughs> and then he wanders off and, I don't know, foretells the coming of the four horsemen of the apocalypse because a black man's been voted in as president. Uh, or whatever he tends to do. Um, okay, I think that's it, though, guys. I mean, unless you have any more uh, points, I think that will wrap up this fantastic, special, uh, wonderful, laughter-filled, silly uh, episode of Dr. Action of the Kick-Ass Kid. Well, I had a great time. Thanks for um, inviting me on the show. It was, it was a pleasure, gentlemen. You are welcome back anytime, Snoog. It's been a thrill. Absolutely, it's uh, <clears throat> it's great to finally talk to you. Yeah, it's good to talk to you. You know, I've uh, been chatting away on Twitter and Facebook for so long. It's actually mm. uh, it's great just to actually speak to you. Yeah, it's really cool. And uh, as for the Kick Ass Kid, we we usually record separately and just throw them together. And it's nice to actually talk to you, Kick Ass Kid. Yeah, it's un- it's unusual to have to like put up with him actually having any kind of input. <laughs> Normally, I just get to ramble on, and then we just kind of stick together whatever bits he sends me. Norm- norm- send normally, normally like, useless stuff, really. Yeah, I usually just send off like two hours worth of speak pipe stuff, and he just <laughs> takes the best bits. Yeah, that's how we've been doing it for the past year and a half, isn't it? Yeah, it's really weird because there's a lot of like heavy breathing and rubbing noises that I have to remove from the final. <laughs> Show. There, is, there is a lot of bad blood between us. There is. <laughs> John actually really likes Chuck Norris. And all that. Yeah, I do. I hate Statham. Do you know, I can't even say that as a joke. Even saying it as a joke feels like I'm betraying my soul. I'm not even kidding. Like Just saying the words I hate Jason say is, is so wrong and, and so inaccurate and so makes me less of a man. Even as a joke, I can't say it. No, I feel like, I feel the same way when I say I like Stephen Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, Stu, do, do you like him or not at all? Like, do you just not like his movies or whatever? But you like to laugh at him, or or do you like us like his movies but also like to laugh at him? A uh, bit of both. I like um, everything from like Above the Law to about Under the Siege, and then everything from there. Not really. And it's just I don't know. He's just such an idiot. <laughs> He's yeah. fun to laugh at, but I just find myself getting more annoyed at them than anything else but that's why i love listening to the show because nothing makes me happier than hearing people take the piss out of steven Seagal. we want more clips of of you phoning him up that's what we want I keep trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the ps morgan interview because i'm sure that's got some choice um quotes in there but i can't find it anywhere so. he's he's uh, yeah trying to find piers morgan is a tricky uh, thing at the best of times the only <laughs> clip i found is one clip where piers asked if he's still dangerous yeah <laughs> He's like, yeah, around a wedding buffet. But, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, look, no, thanks ever so much, Sue. Uh, as I say, you're welcome back on any time, sir. It's been a thrill, been a pleasure. Uh, Doc, I'll talk to you in a week. And uh, this should be going up Wednesday, Thursday time, I'd imagine. Very nice. Thanks, thanks again for having me on. It's been awesome. No worries, guys. You take it thanks. easy, everybody. See you later. Speak See you soon. Later. Bye. 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 Bye.
There are men, and then there are second unit podcast men. The podcast you've just been listening to is part of the Second Unit Podcast Network. Find all of our shows at 2upn.blogspot.com or on Facebook under the Second Unit Podcast Network. Our fantastic list of shows include Drunk on VHS, We Came from the Basement, No Budget Nightmares, The After Movie Diner, Dr. Action and the Kick-Ass Kid, and Blood Baths and Boomsticks. Take one podcast into the shower. Don't be a blithering idiot, Alan. We can give you the multiple podcast cleansing system all in one place that your hair deserves. Our programming is available across all platforms from iTunes to Podomatic, TalkShoe to Stitcher, so you have absolutely no excuse. Listen today and a free naked person of your choice will be shipped from Thailand to your door in a matter of weeks. The Second Unit Podcast Network, bringing you the action and leaving the boring stuff to the other guys. Bloody hell, who does a girl have to blow around here to get a decent beverage? <laughs>